Welcome back. Today we use something really, 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 really bad. Let's get started. All right, so I'm about to make a terrible video, a terrible, 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 terrible video. And that's because I'm going to show you how to import 3D models into Stormworks. This is not a 3D imported model. This is a painstakingly, well, maybe not painstakingly, but this is a user created from the beginning to the end. No 3D software was used other than the editor in this game. And uh, let's just take a look at it real quick. All right, so that's what it looks like. It's supposed to be a BF 109. And I think I captured the look and feel pretty well. And this is all done by pictures and that's it. All right, let's get to the nasty stuff. 3D importing. It's been used for Minecraft. It's been used for StarMade. Pretty much any voxel game usually ends up with a 3D importer that turns a 3D import into blocks. And so I'm going to show you how to do it. But before I do, let's talk about the nastiness of the whole idea and why I really don't want to make this video. But if I don't do it, somebody else will. So I might as well do it, right? Am I right? So here it is. The problem with 3D importing is there are two types of people. There are the ones I call the script kitties, which just download a 3D object, a Statue of Liberty head, and they import it and they upload it to the workshop. And wow, look, it's Statue of Liberty. Who cares? It's an unoptimized, unuseful, you know, object. And then there's those script kitties who import a model plane or a ship and they don't do anything with it. They just import it, throw an engine on it maybe, but they don't optimize it. They don't do anything except upload it to the workshop. And that's, that's why I hate 3D importing. So I'm making this video for the people that are using the 3D importing as a way to enhance their builds, as a way to give them a starting point for modeling a plane or a ship and not doing the tedious, you know, job of trying to make the whole look right. And uh, that's what I'm doing this for. So we're going to show you how to do it the right way. And hopefully the script kitties will stay away from this video. But, you know, they'll, they'll get here. But uh, let's go ahead and start off with the program. So the program we are going to use is called the Stormworks Hole Builder. Now, the idea of this program was to allow you to import a 3D hole or a 3d object that is a hole of a ship and allow you to easily convert it so like if i think does it work here it probably does yeah so if we just convert this default object we can automatically create a wonderful ship hole to start with and there you go and so you can import this into stormworks no big deal bada bing bada boom but no we're not we're going to do that we're going to do the nasty thing we're going to import a plane model so if we go ahead and find a model that we want to import. I'm just going to go ahead and import a BF109 and you're going to see that we only get the kind of like the hole of the ship, the, the, the fuselage. We could generate a Stormworks model off this and just the hole, but mostly what we want to do is we want to get the whole body, the tail and everything to get a good idea of how to build the plane. So let's let this finish. All right, so there you go. So it's converting it, and there is our thing. We could export it, and that would be a good to go. So in order to get the full plane, we have to do another step. So let's go to another program. All right, so now we're in MeshLab, and we're going to convert this OBJ file of the 109 to something that the whole builder can use completely. So now we're inside MeshLab, and this is a free program. You can download Blender if you want, but I found it easier to use MeshLab on most of the objects. They're all different depending on where you download them from and some of them have different problems. But the most common problem is that they're all not one object. So if you go over here to the right and you click flatten visible layers and then click apply, it's gonna go ahead and flatten all the different parts into one object is what this is doing. And you can see now we have a 109 and it's all nice and flat. All right, so that was easy, no big deal. All right, so I'm having trouble showing you what I'm trying to do, but I'm exporting it. I'm doing export as from the menu. I select OBJ, and I put it in a place where I can find it. I'm calling it test. So far, so good. All right, so after you hit export as and put the location of the file, you're going to pop up this screen. Okay, and what we're going to see here is we've got some different settings that you can save. Now, if I were to hit OK and save the file just as it is now, 
it wouldn't load in the whole um, hole, the whole creator, the Stormworks hole creator. I don't know what it's called, but uh, that program. So if I were to click OK right now, it would not load into the Stormworks hole creator. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck color and normal on the first uh, row and leave the other ones alone. If I do this, uh, most objects, they will load properly. If you uncheck any of these, it won't load properly. And sometimes if you don't have texture coordinates, it won't load properly at all. So you'll have to go into Blender and try to create it. And I messed around with it a little bit, but really wasn't worth the effort because most of the objects are pretty OK as long as you uncheck color and normal. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to get out of this program. All right, so now we're back in the Stormworks Hole Builder. And we're going to go ahead and find our model. Oh, it's worth noting you should probably set this minus 90 to 0 because it always rotates for some reason. I don't know why that's a default, but it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do our... All uh, right, we're going to do test OBJ. And then when it turns white, it means it found the right object in the right location. Or that it's loading. So right now it's loading. Okay, it loaded. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Oh, you also have an option. Smoothing or no smoothing. I leave smoothing on. Seems to work okay. So after it loads, we have our 109 all nicely imported. Don't you wish Stormworks could just import it like this? Oh, that would be nice. So now before we export the Stormworks, we want to check the size of the object. So right now, if we were to export it, it would be 99 blocks wide and 88 blocks long. Way too big for a 109. Now, I don't really have the numbers in front of me right now, but we're just going to do, I don't know, 0.4 right now. And just pretend like this is the right wingspan. So we want to do our wingspan or at least our length to what the actual plane was. So I'm going to say it's 36 blocks. Um, and that's fine for right now, just for testing. We're going to go ahead and generate. And then it's going to go ahead and crank through converting the blocks. Or I'm sorry, converting the mesh to blocks. And there you go. And now we have our 109 model. Save XML and it will save it to the Stormworks directory. All right, let's get out of here. So now we're back in the editor and we're looking at my old handmade 109. But let's get into the editor. So before we load the 3D model, let's just look at what a handmade model looks like really quick. So you get the idea. Pretty flat. Not a lot of details on the fuselage. So now let's load the imported model. So now you can see that the importer has done a pretty good job of getting the shape of the 109. It's roughly the right wingspan. So you can see it does the propeller and everything like that. So now this is what separates the script kiddies from the builders. So what we're going to see is some defaults. So you're going to see a few blocks that are out of place and you know some of this stuff where it was trying to convert the wires and of course the bottom and the inside. So in order to make this worth the time and effort for people to download you don't just stick an engine in this and call it a 109. No, 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 no. What you want to do is go ahead and start cleaning this up from the inside and out and decide what you want to do with the wings. I mean it does look nice because it does have the nice arch, but it gives the wings a thicker look. Also, you'll note that it's not odd, it's even. So we have two blocks of the tail, which means that your propeller would sit off to the left or right. So we have to actually do some cutting and some pasting and all that good stuff. So if we go over here and just kind of grab it and also you might want to decide which side you want. This side has angles and this side is straight. So we probably want to flip it over and grab this side instead so we don't have to replace all those blocks. And then take a quick look to make sure we've got everything. Yes we do. So we cut, move it over by one and paste and then put it back together. Okay so now we are starting to build our model and I'm not going to walk through all of this. I just want to give you an idea of what you want to do if you're going to start importing 3D models, clean them up, optimize them, make them look good. They still require effort in order to make them look good. And you can see there are some people using this program. I don't know why I did that. There are some people using this program already. You can tell by the bodies. They're nicely shaped and they are cleaning up the models and making them worth the effort to download because they're not script kitties. So if you're going to use the program, don't be a script kitty. All right, so let me go ahead and load up one that I started cleaning up as a test. All right, so here is the 109 cleaned up. And let's, let's spawn it so we can see it outside. It looks better in the lighting out here. And I haven't done the tail or anything like that, but you can see it has a nice shape of a 109 now. 
So if I clean this up a little bit more and finish up all the uh, features of the original 109, I'll have a nice little complaint. And this is actually using the wings from my original 109 because I felt that the 109 um, that just kind of has its wings tilt with a pivot looked better than the very thick wings of the other one. Plus I have features on this 109 such as, where are they at? Oh, are they falling? Oh, they're falling in already. But on this wing, it has the, um, I forget what they're called right now, but there's a leading edge on this wing that comes out or goes in based on the speed of the plane. And that was on the real 109. So we have that. And then I've stuffed the uh, engine in here just as a test to see if I can make it fit. Cleaned out the inside, started making the canopy, and there you go. So I'll probably finish up this plane at some point with all my other projects <laughs> and have a nice 109 that has a nice body shape to it. And I think I might experiment with more planes like this using just the fuselage, not so much the wings. I don't really like how the wings come out. It does give you an idea of the shape of the wings, but it makes them very thick. But I do like the fuselage um, doing all this work here with the uh, blocks automatically. And even the tail came out pretty nice. So yeah, that is how you import a 3D object and then start your conversion by cleaning it up. Uh, and remember, if you're going to do this, please, 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 take some effort to clean up your models and really make them look nice. And don't just import crazy stuff like the Statue of Liberty head and start uploading it to the workshop. All right, so that's the end of my rant. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. Hopefully you take all the tips I used and do some really nice creations, both ships, cars, and whatever you find as 3D objects. And, uh, you know, put some effort into it. All right. That's it. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the bell so it goes ding dong when I upload a new video. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you next time. Bye!